Hello, welcome. This is Blockchain Bloom, the Blockchain Educator. I'm Matt Lipping, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about that it looks like that the Metaverse housing bubble is bursting because virtual land sales price is down 85%. The second thing I would like to talk about is uh, all about um, Tornado Cash because, you know, it's a crypto uh, mixing service and, uh, you know, addresses which are connected to uh, Tornado Cash somehow uh, are blacklisted by the U.S. Treasury. So they warn U.S. citizens not to use Tornado Cash. And the third thing I would like to talk about that tomorrow the fresh CPI numbers are coming out and what to expect. So we will see all this in today's video. And don't forget, if you would like to get the daily fresh cryptocurrency and blockchain news, just simply subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel, Blockchain Bloom, because I bring you them every single uh, weekday. And also hit the like button if you like this type of content. Check out the links under this video. And now let's get into the prices. Uh, well, let me real quick fix this one here. Okay, right. So what we can see that the Bitcoin is right now uh, down 1.1% in the last 24 hours, makes it 23,803 US dollar, while Ethereum is half percent up, 1,772 US dollar. Then we're looking at the winners. Celsius is up 22%, Zcash up 7%, and Oasis Network 7% in the last 24 hours. And uh, the loser's optimism it's seven percent down. Uh, Lido also seven percent. Filecoin five percent. And when we're looking at the candlestick chart, we can see that uh, you know yesterday we had this, this is green candle. But again, when you're looking at this trend line, it's kind of kind of holding us back a little bit. So this uh, this fact that we cannot really move upward is is, is still there. However. Um, you know, it can easily that we come down and then we just continue. So I'm not saying that, obviously. We don't know so far so good because, you know, since mid of June, we have higher highs, higher lows going up. But how long this relief probably can take, this is definitely a big question. You know, we are also going higher and higher here on the RSI uh, when you're looking at that. So according even to the RSI here on the daily, we're not supposed to turn but we are around this 23, 24,000 ish level, which is definitely a resistance uh, here for a while. And uh, we see how uh, we going to continue. But in long term, in long term, and this is how I usually uh, look at things, we are all good, I think, with Bitcoin, because when we're looking at uh, the, the prices around 23,000 and the all time high, was three times that much, 69,000 US dollar. And when we're looking at, uh, look ahead, you know, a couple of years and we're looking at maybe the next uh, bull run, when you, we can see new all time highs, if we living now in a bearish period for a month or for, for, for a year or so, or even more, then, um, then definitely we are much, much closer to the bottom right now than we are closer to the top. But can we still go down? Of course, because recession, other things can hit hard uh, even in the second part of the year or even next year, 2023, which will have an impact on the stock market and the crypto market and so on and so forth. But nothing uh, lost forever. Uh, you should think about it. Even none of the bull runs. So that's important too. Um, right. And now let's move on to the first topic. The first topic is all about that uh, the metaverse housing bubble is bursting because the virtual land price crashed uh, in average 85%. And of course, many other cryptocurrencies are down, you know, 80, 85%. So, but still we can, you know, identify another area and this is definitely the uh, metaverse uh, housing, <laughs> which means virtual lands, basically. And, uh, you know, land sales uh, went down 85% in 2022, so this year. 
So in particular, Metaverse projects built on Ethereum blockchain, including the Sandbox or uh, Decentraland, have witnessed substantial declines in their valuation, other key metrics. And uh, this is what the data from WeMeta shows. For instance, average price of land sold across Decentraland peaked at $37,238 US dollar, which was in February 2022. This year in February, but always the first, their cost had dropped an average of 5,163 US dollar. Similarly to Sandbox, the average sales price dropped from, uh, you know, circa 35,500, <clears throat> which was this year in January. And uh, right now it's down to 2,800 US dollar in August. So it's happening just in this year. So overall, the average price per parcel of virtual lands across six major Ethereum metaverse projects dropped from approximately average 17,000 in January to now 2,500 in August. And this is about an 85% uh, decline. Despite of this, you know, uh, many uh, people believe that actually even McKinsey's believe that uh, the space can become a five trillion dollar sector by the year 2030 so eight years time uh, a tremendous increase is in front of us but definitely now it's uh, hit it hard you know um well then he, he have you know uh, even this happened that and uh, despite of this uh, corporations venture capitals funds and the private equity investors uh, poured over 120 billion into metaverse sector between January and May this year. So we could see the prices were up in January and February, and 120 billion went into the metaverse sector, more than double uh, than 57 billion invested in whole 2021. So in 2021, back then, 57 billion were invested, and just between January and May, 120 billion uh but you know it looks like that things are changing and this kind of crypto winter has an impact also on uh, metaverses and virtual land sales but could it be a great buying opportunity uh, and uh, when you think about the future it could be not financially wise depends you believe in metaverses or you don't because then uh, you know you can get your uh, virtual land uh, on discount price rather now than a couple of months before when the prices were all the way up okay this was the first topic i wanted to mention the second thing is all about tornado cash which is blacklisted uh, you know all the <clears throat> addresses connected to tornado cash by the u.s treasury so crypto mixing service tornado cash blacklisted by the u.s treasury and um, you know the treasury department has banned all americans from using decentralized crypto mixing service Tornado Cash. US person and entities are prohibited from interacting with Tornado Cash or any of the Ethereum wallet addresses tied to the protocol. Those who do may face criminal penalties. So Tornado Cash has been a key tool for Lazarus Group, a North Korean hacking group tied to the 625 a million March hack of X Infinity's running network, uh, according to the Treasury Department. And blockchain analysis showed that tens of millions of dollars worth of crypto stolen from uh, running flowed through Tornado Cash, which is designed to um, obfuscate the source of funds. So basically, uh, the way it goes, I can actually, it, it, it's. Uh, so basically, uh, as you use it, you know, you're sending it uh, there uh, from your address, then it gets into the uh, pool, and which is the outcome when it comes out, you cannot identify the source uh, of it. So also, other uh, hacks have also traveled through Tornado Cash. Roughly 4,600 4, ETH 
uh, stolen from cryptocurrency change uh, crypto.com was landed through uh, the mixing service earlier this year uh, proceeds from the hundred million dollar hack of the harmony bridge were laundered through the tornado cash and even proceeds from its uh, this month 200 million hack of nomad bridge moved through the service so you can see see that uh, many uh, hackers basically use tornado uh, cash to basically clean uh, their money therefore uh, the u.s treasury taking it uh, very serious but of course it's raising different kind of questions so first of all um if you don't want uh you know um you know for others to see the whole root of your cryptocurrency journey uh because you would like to protect your privacy then you can see you can argue that uh, this is the reason why you're doing something like this uh on the other hand of course it's something for hackers what they would like to use for the same reasons you just maybe don't want it because you're saying it's like it's the crypto the whole blockchain is it's transparent and and this is for you the weak point of it because you don't want uh, others to see what you really have uh, how much you have uh, invested um and and uh, also on the other hand obviously uh, hackers don't want to see that uh, show that uh, either so it raised a couple of questions um because privacy itself it's 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 not illegal so it's nothing wrong with that in my opinion um of course on the other hand uh, steal money from anybody what hackers do it's it is definitely a bad thing and uh, this is what the the u.s treasury would like to fight how successful this will be and how it's going to really work how they identify the the people uh behind the addresses uh well good question um because okay you you might can see who is somehow connected to tornado cash from 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 which address the the money goes in it but when it comes out this is the whole point of this is uh, mixing service um but yes we will see this is right now uh, just the fact and um it's one of the, the the top news today okay and the third thing i would like to talk about is uh well the new cpi data you know uh it's coming out tomorrow uh tomorrow on wednesday and uh, this could be actually also interesting for the rest of the week <laughs> So the consumer price index, how it looked like back in July, that data will be released tomorrow, uh, Wednesday on the 10th of August. And uh, if you remember back in June, which was released in uh, July, so back in June, it was 9.1, a very high number. But now uh, economists predict that the rise could be maybe 8.7 and you know it brings up an interesting question because it really depends what's going to be happening so if it's happening 8.7 that it will be less than last month which should um, show um, productive uh, work from the fed put it this way um, at least when the number is lower it would show that they fight inflation successfully will it be the long term uh the, the fact in the long term that's a good question but uh, that will be the message of it put it this way okay uh if that's happening then the market can have a bit relief and maybe even move higher when you got the stock market and then of course the crypto market as well when it's about um higher than uh you know what they predict and even it goes higher than in june that would be a bad message it's showing that even that they uh, raise the the interest rate with 75 basis points <coughs> that's just simply not enough even if they haven't have done it you know so far in june and in july so then uh, it shows that they have to be even stronger if they are even stronger and they increase um, the interest with a bigger number that it's definitely not good for the uh, economy 
and that will definitely slow down uh, the market. So again, all eyes on the CPI data on uh, tomorrow. Uh, so we will see it's always something in every single month. We're looking at even the, 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 the GDP uh, and, the, and the quarters that we have last time or the CPI data always or uh, how much uh, the interest rate goes up by the Fed. Ah, so crazy, crazy times we're living in, but uh, it has really uh, an impact on the market and on the crypto market as well. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Don't forget, hit the like button if you like this kind of content and also subscribe to this YouTube channel because every single weekday I bring you the freshest cryptocurrency and blockchain news. I wish you an amazing day. Have a good one. Bye-bye.